example. I don't do data transformation that comes from the API in the view models. I do it in the service layer, as we did here, not in the view model. The view model will convert, I don't know, these recipes with primitives like integers and dates into human readable strings that can be presented to the user. Now you can test also the recipe service, but to test the service, you need to prevent it from making real requests. Right now it's calling this method request. And what does it do? Yeah. It uses the URL session, mm -hmm. the shared one. And because of that, if you write a test that uses the recipe service, you actually make a request to the service, a real yeah. request, a network request. And network requests are flaky. They are they can be slow, they can be flaky. They might fail, they might fail, right? It either succeeds or it fails. So in this case, you would have to replace this URL session with something you can control, just like you did here with the recipe service protocol. You could have something similar. So instead of using a static function directly, maybe you can have a protocol or a closure that you pass to this recipe service. So what is the interface here? Request. Yeah. So because it's accessing directly the request, we cannot test this without actually making a network request. So, like, uh, as I understand, like, uh, I need, like, to, in class, uh, to make, a, for example, a class and uh, somehow I can override, like, do URL session shared. So, like, that so I can do an injection and controlling, like, uh, uh, see uh, the result, for example, like an injection uh, failure or a success. Yes. That's it. For example, a protocol. An uh, HTTP client. And even if you want to maintain the same interface you have here, you can. Path query and method. Path query and method. Okay. But here you need to now put this into a class, for example. Class. And this is the URL session HTTP client. Or maybe you have another implementation using, I don't know, Alamo Fire or another library. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This now should be a class or a struct, whatever makes sense. Instead of your service talking directly to a static function that makes a real network request, we can request to dependency injection as well. Let and we can create an initializer here. Generate member-wise initializer. Now you use a client dot request. And in the scene delegate, when we create our service, we need to pass a client here. We need to create our HTTP client URL session HTTP client. Now, when you write tests for your service, service, we can inject a fake client. So let's remove this example for the view model. Now let's focus on the API. Actually, let me just reuse this. That's the one attack. <laughs> what is the so testing out the service? When you're testing the service, let's say you have a test here. You have your system under tests, content pool, service, and it's a client. Now, if you pass a URL session client, you will actually make network requests, right? Yeah. So instead of using that, we can create our own class, a an HTTP client stub, for example, which is a test double, it's called. A class that only exists to facilitate testing. Private class. You see, it's only in the scope of the test. Find within here as a private detail. So, what does it need to implement? Request. Yeah. Yeah. So you control. The result. Yes. 
you can say something like, uh, I wanted to always succeed. Let's say I'm always feeling HTTP request stub. It always fails. You always fails with an error. Erase to any publisher. You create here a struct, any error points to error. So every time someone calls this method, it will fail. Always fail. Yeah. So this is what we inject as a client in line 14, right? Yeah. So when then the... you can test the error case, for example. Yeah. And then you can test whatever happens in the error case. Then you can have the successful case, maybe the always succeeding HTTP <laughs> client stub. And always succeeds with a predefined response. And then you can have a success case. If they're always succeeding, yeah. stop, and so on. There are many techniques. You can use stubs, spies, there are many different implementations. And then like the this, we inject it to our view controller and we um, uh, generate our scenario for doing this. Yeah. In this case, but... you can test the service in isolation. In, is in isolation, right? We never reach right. the view controller here. Yeah. Right. And here you will test this mapping that you were testing through the view model. You will test it here. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. Yes. So and only when you it's in like the view model here. Yeah, you can test everything in isolation. You can test the view controller in isolation. You can test the view model in isolation. The service in isolation. You don't need to integrate them, you have all of them yeah. working together to test them. And when you are testing the view controller, instead of using the real contentful recipe service, you can also create a spy, a stub, a mock, and test just the view controller in isolation. Or you can say, no, I'm going to test the view controller in the view model in, a, in integration, but not the service. Because the more things you put in integration when you're testing, the harder it is to find when something breaks. If there's a failing test, you don't know where's the problem. Is it in the view controller? Is it in the view model? Is it in the service? And one of the good traits of a good test is that they are very precise. When they fail, they tell you exactly where the problem is, so you don't waste time debugging. So you want to test things, not with a lot of things in integration. You can test them as a unit in isolation, or you can test them with some integration, like a view controller and a view model. But not a view controller, a view model, a service, and a HTTP client at the same time, because that will be very hard to mock the scenario. You will have to create a bunch of classes just to set up your test. And if there's a problem, you don't know where the problem is. You have to debug. So ideally, test things as much as you can in isolation. Your test will be much more precise, faster, more reliable. So this is how you would test the service with stops. And when you're testing the view controllers, the view controllers need a dependency as well. What is the dependency of the view controller? The recipe service. And the recipe service is a protocol. So you can also create a stub implementation, like they always succeeds or they always fails. And then you can test the success case and the failure case. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. Yeah, one thing I noticed here, by the way, and can you go to the previous file, Kai? <laughs> Just, and this is important when you're submitting these sort of projects, is like make sure that you don't have any unused code. Like I noticed this method uh, parameter that's that's not used anywhere. And of course, Xcode, you know, it would be very nice if <laughs> could tell you that. Oh, yes, it's not used. Yeah. Yeah, in interviews, try to write your code as simple as possible. Yeah, Don't leave exactly. that code there that is not never used. It'll be much and simpler. Like, while you're testing your components, 
these things tend to come up, you know, like any untested things you have there. Why? Because you're calling the methods and you say, oh, okay, what do I pass here? You know, this is not tested, this sort of thing. So you can easily pick that up. Yeah, running some cover chest and seeing like that code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so remove unused code in interviews. That's important. Everyone that is watching this session, keep your code clean without unnecessary details.